I did, yeah. And I did like the response out of our guys in the second half. One of the things that uh, we talked about a lot at halftime, I told them that there's nowhere to go. Uh, the, there's, there's no exit route. There's no stairs. There's no door. You're going to have to stand there. You're going to have to compete. And you're going to have to compete on both ends of the floor. That their physicality in terms of attacking offensive glass, their physicality offensively taking the ball to the basket, the pace in which they were running offensively, the – um, the energy, effort, and a passion that College of Charleston brought to the table in the first half uh, dominated us, and there was nowhere to go. And, and the only um, thing we needed to do was to respond. And I told them that if you would respond, um, things would change, and they would change quickly. And um, I thought our defense stepped up. Um, we did a really good job of um, one of the things that we talked about was from the three-point line, either take away the three or take away the rhythm three. And I think they only had two three-pointers in the second half. I still felt like they got second chance opportunities, especially when Armando went for the block and our help side defenders needed to come in to, to take their uh, five man away from getting an offensive rebound. But I thought defensively, we, you know, we got 11 steals in the second half. So I felt like we were more active. And then that led into the offensive end, just attacking the basket, whether it's through penetration. And Armando was fantastic getting the position that he wanted in the post and being able to finish. And he either scored or got fouled. And then we got into the penalty early. And I like that because we're a good free throw shooting team. They all were. It, no, they, they all were. So he said specifically you challenged four of your five. They all were. Okay. I challenged all of them. They all were. Are, are you pleased with the way Caleb specifically responded by being as defensive as Caleb is, as exposed as he is out there, but also being as aggressive and attacking the offense? I do. I do. I thought, you know, when you look at Caleb's stat line, it was, um, you know, he got to the free throw line um, and he led the team in assists. And so that's the Caleb love that can do that every night. And I felt like in the second half, we responded defensively as well. Um, his man didn't score easily. There was resistance. He competed. And so I was very proud of, I was very proud of Caleb in the second half. He responds on both ends of the floor. Well, I think any time that we get steals and that, you know, we're, we're really good in transition. One of the things that we do is, you know, when we get steals, you know, we've got all five guys sprinting and we've got great spacing and balance and we've got guys that can shoot threes in transition but also attack the basket. So, um, you know, when we're able to steal the ball and, and also rebound, that we feel like we're in a good position transition-wise from an offensive standpoint and getting the shot that we want. Well, I think it's two things. I challenged him. You know, at, the, at, at, at halftime, I think he only had one shot. And so, you know, there's, there, there's two parts to it. One, you can call a play for a player. And then number two, they actually have to catch the ball in the play to be able to do something with it. And so we called just as many plays in the first half as for Armando than we did in the second half. But Armando was fantastic. He, he did his work early. Um, you know, he, he caught the ball where he wanted to. He outworked whoever defended him to catch the ball as close as he could to the basket. His moves were definitive and strong, and he either scored or got fouled. And I was, I was very proud of him. No, one of the things I told them, you know, this is a different generation. You know, my generation, if somebody calls you soft, then it's, it's real. And it's real. And so... Um, but they were, you know, they were, we were soft in the first half. Um, we were soft at parts against UNC Wilmington and on both ends of the floor. And there's a physicality that has to be brought all the time. And I'm, I'm, I'm thankful for these games because College of Charleston is an unbelievable program, team, um, outstanding coach and coaching staff. And, um, 
whether we're playing college or Charleston or whomever, the type of competitiveness that we brought in the second half is something that has to be brought all the time. That doesn't surprise me at all. That's something that he can do. He has tremendous athleticism and quickness. I think he can be one of the best on-ball defenders full court in the country. He's just, he's gifted. It's one of his gifts and talents to be able to, to guard multiple guys, especially on the dribble. And I thought he disrupted the guy bringing up the ball because of his um, ability to uh, make them run their offense out further, and that allowed us to get steals and deflections and missed shots. And so very proud of, of Seth. I thought he played unbelievable when he was in the game, and I'm so glad that he's here. Yeah, um, that's a great question. <laughs> you know, that's two straight games that we've been out-rebounded. Um, I think last year, I know we were number one in the ACC in terms of defensive rebounding. I think we were number two or three nationally. So that's something that we pride ourselves on is, you know, limiting opponents to one shot every possession. You know, one of the things I think I've said it to you and others, like every game we got to check three boxes. Number one, we got to get after it defensively. We didn't do that in the first half. They shot over 50%. We did better in the second half. We got to check the box in terms of rebounding. We haven't done that the last two games, and that's going to get fixed. And then number three is got to take care of the basketball. And so, um, that's something that needs to change and will change. Well, it, it's November. <laughs> it's November. And, you know, one of the things that I have learned in my second year is that every team is different. It doesn't matter if you have 14 of the 17 guys returning. It's not it, – this, this is this year's team. And so there's growth and, ma and maturity for our team that, that just has to happen. And um, I, I spoke with the team yesterday, and one of the things that I have sensed in them and – I just felt not a nervousness, but maybe a little, a little bit of a burden of 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 the expectations, and I, I tried to you know get them to understand that though those expectations are noise that means nothing, and I felt like on every play they were trying to make it look like the way we looked in April, and that's just not possible that just can't happen this is this year's team so let's just be committed to showing up every day at practice let's prepare let's see how good we we can become and at the end of the day let's let's live with the results thanks coach thank you uh, we have a press conference on monday it'll be just coach davis on monday too <laughs>